Hey, welcome to this radio video. This is the Solar Activity and Propagation Report number 11 for August 21st, 2014. So uh, we're going to have a look at what happened in the past week, what's possibly going to happen in the next week. So um, first of all, this is what this, the uh, sun looks like today, August 21st. Uh, there are quite a few sunspots, um, some of the interesting regions to look for. Uh, 2141 right here, 2146 and 2148 uh, all have the possibility of uh, flaring. But as you know, uh, also 2143 is kind of a little complex group here. Um, of course, as you probably know, if you follow these videos, and um, is that... Even though there's some sunspots, even though they look active and their magnetic fields are twisted and so on, doesn't mean there's going to be a flare. And actually, there was kind of a coronal mass ejection this week, and it didn't even come from a sunspot. It came from a uh, magnetic filament. Um, the sun has all sorts of magnetic filaments that's crisscrossing the surface, and sometimes they are thousands and even hundreds of thousands of kilometers long and, and they are linked together and sometimes they snap and that could cause a um, cloud of particle to erupt from the sun and that's what happened this week actually uh, and it's not even a sunspot that created that cloud uh, if we look at the solar indices this morning on um, dx.qsl.net uh, solar flux 118 it stayed pretty much where I stated it would be uh, you know between a hundred and ten and a hundred and twenty thirty um, it didn't go below a hundred I didn't think it would go below a hundred and uh, so uh, propagation was in general in the past week pretty good the only uh, little problem that occurred was uh, on the uh, 19th 20th of August there was uh, that coronal mass ejection from the Sun actually uh, reached Earth and raised the uh, K index a little bit it uh, you know mounted to four um, four or five in that region so uh, that's pretty much a little indication that what happened in the past um, few days there was this uh, if you look at the K index here, it even went to 6 on uh, late August 19th to August 20th, so uh, which is pretty high. And so um, I did notice the effect because when I listened to um, Radio Romania on 11955 and even 9700 at uh, 0 and 0, 0100, I noticed that the signal was much weaker than usual and had a little trembling in it which is often a indication that something's happening in the uh, ionosphere. So um, we had that little brief moment, went up to four and six, but it doesn't didn't last long. Um, you know, even at the early hours of August 20th, it already came back down to two. So um, it was brief. A lot of people said they had some really really nice auroras. Actually, there's uh, a very nice picture of that here from uh, Lithuania. This is a picture of the auroras in uh, Lithuania. So, um, pretty nice purple auroras. And um, actually, they were strong enough to go down to Lithuania, uh, which is not a spot where they usually see them very, uh, very much. You know, um, the aurora is usually something that's quite northerly. Uh, even here in Montreal, um, you know, I, I see rarely auroras. I see them. Um, when the activity is really strong, first of all, because of the, the um, bright sun, uh, not sun, but the bright lights in the uh, city at night, really, really lowers the chance to see them. And, um, you know, the geomagnetic activity needs to be quite strong for them to go down up to our level at about 45 latitude north. Uh, where they are more common is in the northern part of Canada, and above the Arctic Circle and you know Scandinavian countries Sweden Norway Finland or um, even Russia uh, have more chance of seeing these auroras actually 
because they are more northerly than um, Montreal, Canada. Um, it is interesting when you look at a map actually to see that uh, Montreal is uh, much more south than a lot of Euro European countries actually. Uh, but we do have <laughs> really, really harsh winters compared to a lot of uh, the European countries that are northerly, you know. So, uh, what we had is a brief moment, but in general, propagation was great. If you look at my videos yesterday of uh, my de expedition, my small de expedition to Perry Island, um, well, you, you, propagation was amazing. I received a lot of signals that were really, really good, um, especially Bangladesh, Betar, which is something that I don't really catch very well here at my location. And it was booming in on my uh, PL450 uh, over there because of low noise. Uh, if I look at the uh, signal, uh, I just tuned a little bit the signal of KBS World Radio 15575. It is weaker than usual this morning, um, you know, barely reaching S7 at times, where I usually have it more close to S9 and sometimes reaching S9 plus 10 and 20. So uh, signals are a little weaker, but one thing that you have to also understand is that we are slowly progressing towards fall. Um, we are now a month away from uh, fall in the northern hemisphere, so propagation is changing. And actually, uh, it is changing for a good reason, because fall and spring are great, great times for um, radio signals are actually, I think personally, um, fall and spring around, you know, September, October, around March, February, March, April, these are the best times for propagation. And uh, a lot of signals from Asia actually here will come in at these moments. Uh, what are we expecting in the week ahead? Um, well, the biggest news was that little, you know, thing here about the um, coronal mass ejection that hit, and uh, that's pretty much that's pretty much what we had that kind of changed a little bit the um, activity. But for the rest, um, propagation was good, and for the next week, unless something really unusual happened. I don't expect propagation to be bad at all. It should actually be quite good. And I expect the K index to stay quite low, you know, two, one, um, unless there's some filament or sunspot that erupts. So um, I expect good con conditions. Uh, there's just enough sunspots that I think the solar flux will maintain itself around 120 um, pretty much all week. So expect it to be above 100, that's for sure. And so um, that will keep propagation to a nice, good level. Um, I've seen openings even to the 10 meter band with solar flux of 120. So uh, expect that to be interesting. Uh, we are getting into fall propagation, so I think it's going to be also uh, better at, as the weeks uh, go ahead here. And um, hopefully we'll have good propagation next week, um, next week on... Um, August 29th, I will have a Google Hangout from uh, uh, 21, uh, 19 to 21 hours UTC. So uh, if you are available, remember that Google Hangout is coming up next week. I'll talk about it a little more, of course, in the next propagation report. And uh, of course, if you want to have more news of what's happening, don't forget three great websites uh, where you have um, a lot of information. Solarham.net, great, great website, very detailed website with daily updates on what's happening. Uh, here showing a new sunspot group actually coming up. So, you know, expect solar flux to stay at 120, maybe you rise a little bit. Um, I think it's going to be quite good. Um, 
Another great website, dx.usl.net slash propagation. Uh, this is a very uh, you know, basic page, but it gives all the details, especially the first uh, part of the page with the three most important numbers, <laughs> solar flux, um, A and K indices. Um, once again, you want to have a solar flux as high as possible and a K index as low as possible. So um, that usually that combination is actually quite good. And um, spaceweather.com with lots of news, not just of solar activity, but uh, everything related with solar activity in a way. So um, great little articles, uh, one here that's quite interesting about the mystery of the ozone layer. Uh, that's worth a little read if you uh, remember back in the 80s here in Montreal, we had a, a uh, protocol here. It was called the Montreal Protocol for uh, the uh, ozone layer. And we uh, actually had a real nice 3D where we uh, eliminated CFCs. And what happened is... Uh, There's kind of a mystery because 27 years after, we still have lots of CFCs in the ozone layer, and it's kind of surprising. And also lots of information about um, auroras uh, when we have, uh, you know, geomagnetic activity and stuff. And, um, you know, updates if there's flares and stuff like that. There's also updates like on solarham.net. So take a peek at these um, great websites for more information. They are worth it. Um, especially the propagation here, these numbers I check pretty much every day. Uh, the solar flux is updated at 2100 hours UTC every day, so I usually take a peek around 22, 2300 hours. I want to see what's the solar flux like. The K indice is updated every three hours, so um, it is uh, this is the K index at 1200 UT. Uh, the next K index measure will be at 1500 UT. So, uh, because this one is a little more, um, you know, can change from minute to minute. If we have an impact, K, K index can become from 2 to 6 in a matter of an hour or two. Well, the solar flux uh, does rise, but it usually will rise slower, slower. You know, it's like in a 24-hour period, it could rise from 10, 20, 30, 40 points, but uh, it has less of an impact, uh, immediate impact. Now, it's not like the geomagnetic activity. So hope you enjoyed these little propagation reports. They're a little more personal propagation reports than uh, most other bulletins. And I try to explain things in the easiest way possible. So uh, hope you enjoy and uh, thanks for watching and uh, see you next week for our next uh, solar and propagation report. This was the solar and propagation report number 11 for August 21st, 2014. 73s.